have a few things to say also to welcome you uh, from the perspective of, uh, of Build Up, which is the organization that has been uh, running the Build Peace uh, series of conferences uh, for a number of years now. This is our fifth year. Um, Build Up is an organization that I co-founded with a few other people who are in the room that you will meet later. Um, and uh, that works to recognize and catalyze better lo local peace building through innovation. We do this in several different ways. We research innovative practices for peace building. We apply our learning to projects spanning diverse contexts and countries, and you may hear about some of them through the program as well. We support initiatives led by other peace builders, um, and some of the people that we work with are also in the room, so hopefully you'll get to meet them as well. Um, and we try to share our knowledge through a growing community of practice. And that growing community of practice is very much um, anchored and catalyzed by the Build Peace Conference, by this event. Um, so we hope if it's your first time, if it's the first time you're coming to our Build Peace Conference, that you will join us in this community of practice that is really trying to rethink how we do peace building in an innovative way. Um, I said that this is the fifth conference. Um, I just wanted to, to uh, mention very briefly the previous conferences for those of you that are new to the Build Peace Conference. Um, we started in 2014 in Boston at MIT, um, and there we talked about the four functions of technology for peace. So we talked very much about um, what are the ways that we can strategically use technology to build peace. Uh, in 2015, we were in Nicosia in Cyprus, um, and we talked mainly about um, how technology can create alternative infrastructures for peace. That was very much our focus. In 2016, we were in Zurich, um, and there we moved away from just talking about technology and we started talking about other innovations as well. So there was a lot of mention um, earlier from Lord Alderdice about the arts, uh, the creative arts, and also um, I think it's something that is very present in Ulster University. And that was something that came into the conversation for us in 2016. We started talking about peace building innovations in general and how they drive personal, cultural, and societal transformation. And then in 2017, last year, we were in Bogota. Um, and we talked about how peace building innovations can support participation in peace agreements, a topic that was very relevant to the Colombian context, but is also very relevant to many other places. So that's the journey that, that we've been on. And, um, and I think the, the, the question that kind of underpins all of these different inquiries across the years is what is the relationship in between innovation, digital technologies, and peace? That's the question that we keep asking ourselves in different forums, in different contexts, with different angles, but really that is the underpinning question. And there's an underlying assumption to that question, or at least there has been an underlying assumption to that question for the past four years. And that assumption is that technology is just a tool, and what matters is how we choose to use it. If you've been to a Build Peace conference before, you've heard me say that, because I think I've said it at the beginning of every single conference. If you've been to any of the trainings that Build Up runs, You've heard us say that. Technology is just a tool. What matters is how you choose to use it. This, is, this underlying assumption about the neutrality of, of digital technology is also behind this idea about what are the functions of technology, um, which, again, if you've taken any of our trainings, you've heard, heard us talk about the different strategic functions that technology can play to build peace. So we have a problem because we're increasingly starting to question that assumption internally to build up. We're actually not so sure that technology is just a tool anymore. Um, and actually questioning that, ass that assumption is very relevant to the theme of the conference uh, this year. We're increasingly starting to think that technology is actually tooling us. Or another way to say it is that a technology stops being just a tool when it fundamentally alters the human experience. I think a, an, an easy way to start thinking about this, or at least how I started to think about it, is to think about clocks. Before we had clocks, we had a very different experience of time. Time was measured according to very different processes, to natural processes, or to how long something took to do, or to the weather, or to the seasons, or just to how long you wanted to do something for. It was a very different thing. When clocks were introduced, it suddenly began being measured in a different way. And by being measured in a different way, we became conditioned by that tool. Our experience of time changed fundamentally. Our experience of work changed fundamentally. Our experience of leisure changed fundamentally. So I'm not sure that clock is just a tool, because in a way, it tools us. And I think that with digital technology, 
this is even more important. And it's even more important to think about how digital technology is tooling us. And it's relevant to the conversation that we're having as peace builders when it comes to innovation. I don't claim to be an expert in this. I have done a lot of reading because I've become slightly obsessed with this idea of digital technology tooling us. What I've discovered is there's some research out there about this. There's increasing bodies of research, but there isn't a co coherent theory about exactly what digital technology is doing to us. So here's what I've learned um, from reading and, and from questioning this through the work that we do. I think that digital technology is changing our incentives. There's a lot of research into uh, the, the dopamine releases from using, for example, social media or smartphones. All the notifications that you get and what that does to your brain. The neural pathways that it creates and how that changes our incentives. Um, how that can create addiction. We are all addicted to looking at our phones. Maybe not all of us, but many of us are. And especially the younger you are. So this is very relevant for millennials and for younger millennials especially, so for teenagers. Um, there's actually a whole kind of body of practice or practice and research um, in Silicon Valley around persuasive technologies. The idea of persuasive technologies is if you uh, can crack exactly the way to release dopamine into the brain, so basically exactly the moment when notifications are going to be the most addictive, your smartphone app or your digital technology will be more successful. It's a little perverse, right? In my view, at least. But it's very eff effective. I think the second thing that digital technology is doing to tool us is that it's affecting how we construct discourse. I hardly feel like I need to explain that in this room, but just to say it very quickly, we know that most people are increasingly consuming media through social media. Um, and we know that social media is built to maximize engagement. And that in order to maximize engage engagement, uh, what most social media platforms do is present us content that is similar to that which we have previously liked. In other words, they are built to create filter bubbles. Um, they are, are built on the idea of homophily, of birds of a feather, feather flock together. People want to hear what they already agree with. And so they create eco chambers. And so they change how we're constructing discourse, right? And this all kind of goes to something that Lord Alderdice was beginning to talk about, which was the importance of re relationships and identity, right? If we have a change in our incentives and a change in how our discourse is built, um, then this also alters how we build our identities. Um, we know that a lot of uh, teenagers who overuse um, social media in particular, but also other digital technologies, um, are more likely to be depressive. Um, we know that uh, political polarization is more prevalent as a result of how we're constructing discourse. Um, and we know that uh, we're beginning to, to understand through some research um, that people who use digital technology more are less likely to be able to manage interpersonal conflict. I think that's interesting. Again, I don't think that I have an overall theory about it, but I think these are all indicators of things that we should be worried about and thinking about. We should be thinking about how digital technology is tooling us because we're people who want to build peace in innovative ways and do so using digital technologies. Okay, so what's that got to do with uh, prosperity, which is the, uh, the theme of this conference? Um, we said in Build Peace 2018 we would explore how technological innovation and creativity can reshape the economic opportunities, economic organization, and economic power that impact how we live together in peace. And we also know that in many contexts, building peace requires addressing the role of economics in conflict. So to build peace, we must also reimagine the economic organization and the economic powers that affect how we live together. Creative and digital economies can create or deepen conflict, altering or reinforcing the balance of power in ways that damage efforts towards reconciliation and social cohesion. It can go either way, right? We know there has always been an economic dimension to, to who gets to affect our incentives, our discourses, and our identities. And I think what we want to question is whether digital technology can re-entrench this power or whether it can reshape it. So as we move forward into the conference, um, we wanted to encourage you to keep these three cross-cutting questions with you. How can we build innovations that reshape rather than re-entrench the economic power that impacts how we live together in peace? How can we create tools and processes that are anchored in values of inclusion and equality 
rather than persuasion and power? And what ethical guidelines can help us navigate digital technologies that are mo much more than just tools? If we're starting to see that maybe digital technologies are to a certain extent tooling us, then how do we navigate that? Uh, finally, every year we offer up a slogan that we hope can capture the spirit of the conference. Um, this is the spirit in which we hope that we can all move through this particular inquiry um, with respect for each other's ideas, integrity and lived experience. Uh, this year we ask you to keep this slogan in your hearts, nothing about us, without us, is for us. It's a slogan that many different organizations working in different fields have used over the years. Um, and we thought it was relevant to the inquiry this year as we think about how do we ensure that there is inclusion and prosperity for all in this very complex setting of uh, innovation and digital technology. So thank you. I hope that was uh, helpful in starting to think about the inquiry. And I'd now like to hand over to Maud from BuildUp who will give us a bit more on the program.